All right. How is everyone tonight? Doing well? All feeling full and fed? Good, good. So uh, before I get started, I want to introduce myself. My name is Nick Sapinero. I'm the Chief Information Officer at a cryptocurrency blockchain startup called The Divi Project. Um, before we jump in here, how many people are familiar with blockchain, cryptocurrency? Decent amount of people, more than usual actually, <laughs> so that's good. Um, some of what I'll, I'll talk about does assume that you know a little bit about blockchain, but there will be, I'll leave a little bit of time at the end for questions in case I, I say something that goes over the head or whatever. Um, so, but today I'm going to be talking about cryptocurrency as a side hustle. Um, I will talk a little bit about my project towards the end, but I really want to talk more about how you can actually make your PC work for you and how to evaluate projects in order to make money in cryptocurrency and hopefully avoid getting scammed or investing in the wrong projects. So the gig economy has exploded over the past few years. Things like Uber, Lyft, Postmates, Fiverr, and, uh, and Freelancer and, and sites like that have empowered people to basically make a side income uh, with their computer or with their car or with whatever. Um, actually, more than 57 million Americans are part of the uh, gig economy, making a side income in this way. Some people even use it as their primary source of income. I'm sure you guys have met Lyft drivers that drive Lyft for a living, right? Um, cryptocurrency is another way that you can actually earn money on the side or as a primary income. I, for example, have turned it into a primary income uh, by working uh, with a company that, that pays me in crypto. Um, but if you're not willing to or don't have the ability to work full time at a cryptocurrency startup, there are a few ways that you can earn money uh, with cryptocurrency. I'm going to talk about the four main ways here, uh, mining, trading, staking, and masternodes. And each one of these comes with their own set of caveats uh, and benefits. So mining, uh, and just to let you know, I'm going to be more uh, focused on masternodes and staking. So, <laughs> um, so mining cryptocurrency, the, the potential caveats that you'll run into, one, it's power hungry. Uh, the yearly Bitcoin power consumption is estimated to be that <laughs> equivalent to that of Ireland. Um, there's a relatively high cost in terms of your initial upfront cost, getting that equipment into your house uh, and upgrading the equipment, making sure that it's, that it's uh, in line with, with, with who you're competing with. Um, and it's relatively inefficient. So the, the low throughput actually means that you'll have to be upgrading your equipment more often and you're competing with massive operations at this point. There are warehouses in China, there are warehouses all throughout the United States and Europe that will destroy you if you're trying to mine Bitcoin. Um, so it's really not so much a hobby anymore for the individual user. Trading cryptocurrency. I know plenty of people that have been successful in trading cryptocurrency, but it is extremely stressful. Uh, a professional trader is spending probably 40 to 60 hours a week in front of their screen, um, probably losing money. It's really difficult and you're competing with robots. So trading bots, algorithms, quants, et cetera, that again, will destroy you in your efforts. This isn't to say that you can't be successful trading cryptocurrency, just be aware that it is wrought with risk. Um, and finally, taxes. We talked about this in the last presentation. Uh, capital gains tax is what, 50%, something like that. So any gains that you do make are going to probably be eradicated by you cashing them out. And then we have staking and masternodes. Um, staking and masternodes do offer a much lower barrier to entry. The technical requirements, again, are much, much lower. They don't require as much power. In fact, uh, staking and masternodes require about 99% less energy uh, than mining. So a lot more eco-friendly that way too. The lower risk, uh, of course, that low barrier to entry um, plays into this lower risk, but also the upfront cost is generally lower and you're earning cryptocurrency more frequently. In, and so basically you're averaging out your, your initial investment. And then you can actually, and this is not tax advice, you should definitely talk to a tax attorney or an accountant before taking this advice, but generally you can uh, consider what you're doing as work. Um, so you can actually, and same with mining, your equipment and where you store your equipment, et cetera, can actually be in some cases written off on your taxes. And the rewards can be taxed as earned income rather than 
cap gains. So does anyone know actually what a master node is? A couple people. Um, so essentially it's a full node carrying a complete copy of the blockchain. Uh, a node is just a computer or server um, that verifies and secures the network's transactions. So basically it's a computer that runs a program and for running that program you get paid a little bit of cryptocurrency. Similarly, staking is again a full node, but it differs in that it actually adds new blocks to the blockchain. Both of these methodologies uh, support the cryptocurrency ecosystem and network that you're participating in, and both pay out different rewards based on whichever network you're participating in. The tokenomics obviously vary pretty wildly, um, and that's why it's important to research into each project that you invest in. As far as opportunity goes, so right now, at least when I made this presentation, the crypto market cap was $243 billion. Anybody know what it is at this moment in time? No one offhand? Two, 237? Somewhere around. Somewhere around. It's, it's close. Um, Apple, in their last investor call, cash on hand, had $245 billion in cash. So the actual crypto market cap is around the same amount as Apple, the largest company in the world, has on hand at any given time. The masternode segment of the cryptocurrency ecosystem is only $2 billion. So that's less than 1% of the overall market cap. If you can't see an opportunity there, you might be blind. So just kidding. Um, my point being, you are very early. If you're in this room, you're making a great decision as far as uh, making a step towards financial freedom. Cryptocurrency, while it has skyrocketed over the past 10 years or so, uh, is still extremely young. And you're, you're in a really great position if you're just getting into it now or if you've been in it for a while. So how do you choose an investment? Um, in my opinion, fundamentals are key. A lot of people try to read charts and do technical analysis, and that does sometimes work in many cases. However, crypto is a very emotional game. There are a lot of inexperienced investors playing this game, and for that reason, it's important to look at the fundamentals of projects because the prices are just going to go all over the place. There's absolutely no way to really predict, but you can invest wisely based on certain fundamentals. Now, no matter what I say here, it's always important to do your own research. Don't take what anybody on YouTube has to say seriously. Always look into whatever anyone's saying and make sure that you're making the prudent decision for yourself. First thing I always look at when I'm looking at a new crypto investment is their team and their community. The team has to be accessible. I don't wanna see you know, some hacker image in their team profile page. Um, you wanna see a team that has LinkedIn pages, has Twitter pages, et cetera. And it's nice if they have some past successes. You know, if they've been at major companies or if they've started companies that have done well, even if the companies fail, if they have some experience with startups, et cetera, that can be really, really helpful, especially in, in a volatile market like, like cryptocurrency. Uh, the community should be active. Just because somebody has 50,000 followers on Twitter doesn't mean that there's 50,000 people owning that coin or, or participating in that coin. Look at their engagement. 50,000 followers with two retweets, that's all fake, right? All the followers are fake. I think most of us probably know that, right? Um, and so it's really important to have that active community. Uh, a strong advisory board is, is always a plus. People that are already in the crypto space or within tech. Um, and then commu communication, right? Are they putting out blogs? Uh, are they updating their website? These types of things show that they're actually attempting to build something rather than raise a bunch of money and disappear. Then history of success. So actually right now is a great time to start evaluating projects because we just are pretty much leaving a, a pretty extended bear market. Um, some of you may think we're still in the bear market, but I feel that we're starting to, to emerge from it. So did the project survive the bear market? A lot of projects failed. Even the $100 million ICOs, some of them, are gone. So that's a really important indica indicator. Um, have there been consistent updates to the, to the code base and the roadmap? You can go on their GitHub. Um, it's important to realize that GitHub is not always a metric that you can take uh, for granted because some teams do develop privately and then they'll push updates all at once. Um, so it's, again, you can go into their community and see where the progress has been going. But it's still a good metric. Um, and how has the team dealt with adversity? So for example, um, 
my project was a, a victim of the Cryptopia hack. Is anybody familiar with what happened there? Big exchange got hacked. A lot of our users were on there, um, and we had to recover pretty quickly. So we, we quickly found a couple exchanges to get on. And uh, actually, as of tonight, uh, we just announced that we're going to be on a much, much larger exchange called uh, BitTrue, which does a couple hundred million dollars in volume. So we're very excited about that. But during that time period, we were getting absolutely destroyed because there was absolutely no liquidity for our coin. So the few small exchanges that we were still listed on, if somebody dumped, the price was going down 20, 30, 40 percent. In order to get through that, it, it took, some, took some creativity. So that's a good thing to look for. Utility and purpose, extremely important. There are a lot of blockchain and crypto projects out there that do absolutely jack shit. And it's really important that a project is at least trying to solve a real problem. They may not have the solution built today, but if it's on their roadmap and they're making progress towards it, that's a good indicator. Um, is the project a genuine use case for blockchain? So just because you put blockchain in the name doesn't mean that it needs blockchain. Some things are better to be on a, a distributed ledger or, um, or just a regular ledger for, for that matter. Um, and is their business model scalable? Um, that's for you to evaluate and can be really difficult to see, especially on the onset. Finally, a uh, return on investment. I mean, we're all investing to make money, right? So uh, how long will it take you to get back your initial investment? And then how long will it take you to see 10x, 100x? When a venture capitalist in, invests in a project, they're looking for a 10x return. They won't even get out of bed for less than that. They may never see that. In fact, they lose on most investments. But if they can't at least see the 10x, there's no point. And is there any liquidity? You have to look at volume on the exchanges. The order books are a good thing to look at as well. This is all going to tell you whether or not you can sell or buy more into your position. If, if there's really low volume, um, you may be stuck in that position for quite some time. And that may not be a bad thing for you, depending on your investment strategy. But again, it's something to look at. So uh, as far as masternodes and staking coins go, uh, they're a really great investment because why? They're generating more coins for you all the time. So why wouldn't everybody be hosting these, right? Well, there's a pretty massive problem, and that's user experience. Uh, in cryptocurrency, it seems like user experience is almost ignored in a lot of the cases. And this is being heavily improved, which is really nice to see. But it is still pretty much a massive issue. I'm going to show you some of our competitors in the masternode space. Um, and you can see, they're actually turning away users. Uh, by saying setting up your own masternode can be hard work. Uh, this guide assumes basic knowledge of PuTTY and Linux. Uh, if you read all the considerations and you still want to go forward, etc. They're basically saying don't try this unless you have uh, distinct technical knowledge, computer science background, etc. I feel like that's not a good solution for mass adoption. And we're going to stay at this 1% of the market cap unless we improve that. And that's what Divi Project has done. Huge shameless plug. <laughs> so we created the first truly one-click masternode deployment for the cloud. You retain control of all of your keys, but you can actually deploy to the cloud just as easy as you would set up a, 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 an account online. And this is a quick video. It's been heavily sped up uh, that shows you that with just a few clicks, you can subscribe to our service and deploy your masternode. The lower masternodes are $10 and the higher masternodes are 15. So we have five different entry points for our masternodes, uh, which kind of gamifies the system and uh, encourages people to hold on to the coins, which has really stabilized our price, as we've seen. So are there any questions? I'm just curious, you said Cryptopia. Are you from New Zealand? I'm not, no. Uh, we do have uh, one employee from New Zealand, and we have a good community there. Mm -hmm. But um, no, it was just a solution for us in the beginning. Gotcha. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a real shame what happened over there. Is this an We're not. We have our own blockchain that launched September of last year. And uh, our desktop app is available now. Uh, mobile should be probably next quarter or the end of this quarter. Uh, we're a fork of Pivx. Um, but there's been significant changes. So like there's no Z, ZPIV, if you guys know what that is, in, in our blockchain. Um, there's tiered masternodes rather than just a single tier. We just kept the staking. 
Uh, we removed the seesaw algorithm. There's, there's been a, a fair amount of changes. What kind of activity is that in the blockchain? Uh, so right now it's primarily transactional. Um, and of course, people setting up masternodes or staking. Um, however, in the future, actually the very near future, we're going to be uh, upgrading the network and implementing atomic swaps, uh, hash time lock contracts, um, named addresses, as well as other uh, metadata storage. And I'm actually really excited about the metadata storage thing because it allows us to start implementing identity on the blockchain securely. Um, so like when you have to go through KYC, for example, for, uh, for an exchange or for, for a crowd sale or something like that, you always have to redo the KYC over and over again, right? Super annoying. It can sometimes take weeks. We were just talking about this in the back. Um, so we're actually building a solution for that that will be on-chain, private, secured, and uh, permission-based. Um, so you only have to do your KYC once. And then sort of like a login with Facebook thing, minus the privacy concerns, uh, you'll be able to, to log in with Divi, for example. So we're working on that right now. And that that technology will be accessible in uh, in the upgrade. How many transactions are um, it's, it's hard to say at scale. Um, but generally, we like to say it's, it's uh, about triple that of Bitcoin. Um, but, you know, we've only run it under stress tests. The network's small right now. There's, I think, 450 masternodes deployed. Um, probably around the same amount of people staking. Um, so it's hard to say because it just hasn't been put under that kind of load. That said, we are implementing our own Lightning Network. Um, that technology is already available if you guys want to play with it on our test network. Um, so that will help us with, with scalability and, and things like that. We also have larger block sizes and shorter block times. Um, so it should scale a little bit better than, than how Bitcoin does. The prices that you charge for hosting a node, are those based, I assume, on like a flat number of Divi that you spend? Or is it based in USD and the amount of Divi goes up and down? Or yeah, do right, you pin your prices? right now the, the hosting cost is, is based on USD. Mm -hmm. um, it's paid through PayPal. Okay. Um, but as we implement the hash time lock contracts, we'll actually be able to offer subscription-based payments. Okay. And I hope to rip PayPal completely out of our ecosystem uh, by the end of the year. Devil. Agreed. Correct. So I have a question. Um, for a lot of different companies, when you want to become a master and all, you should have like a certain stake of like the coin or something. That's right. Uh, how is it here? And um, the coin which is generating is the coin which, what was that name? Divi. Divi. Mm -hmm. um, is, it's only that, right? That's, for now, that's all it is. Um, we do have plans to add other other cryptocurrencies in the future. It's just not our focus at the, at the very moment. Um, but yeah, so there's five different entry points. The lowest uh, level for staking is 10,000. Um, the lowest level for masternodes is 100,000, which will cost you about 500 bucks today. Um, and then it goes up from there. And each level of masternode awards you um, more frequently. So the higher tiers, you'll make a little bit more money. Not currently, no. We, subscription payments on the blockchain are, are a tough beast to tackle. But um, like I said, it's, it's definitely on our roadmap, which you can also see on our website. Anyone else? So, Go ahead. Um, sorry. So this is a, um, a fork of a coin that you mentioned. And what is the market cap on this one? Uh, it's around $6 million right now. So it's, uh, it's a pretty low cap project. Um, during the bull, bull run, we were up to like 60 million or something. Um, but I tend to think that pretty much all of those values were heavily overbought and inflated. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're much closer to, we're maybe a little undervalued now, but we're probably much closer. What was the highest value in this case? Um, well, this is a little bit complex because we had a, a, an exchange token. Mm -hmm. We did an ICO on Ethereum. Um, at, at that time, it was, I think, $12. Which equivalent in our current ecosystem would be twelve cents? Mm -hmm. What's up? Um, do you give a guide for people who want to run the master node themselves? We do. Or is it only through your own platform? No, no. You can totally do it one hundred percent yourself. We have uh, a guide on our wiki page, and um, some of our community have made videos and stuff like that as well. Okay. If you wanted to do it manually. And then your hosted nodes. Do you guys like rely on cloud providers to run them, or do you have your own data center? Or how do you? Yeah, we use um, right now DigitalOcean. We'll be expanding to Vulture 
soon as well. Um, but DigitalOcean gave us the best deal, basically. Sure. Um, and they've they've been great. We've had a, a great relationship directly with them, and yeah, you know, we use, we use them for some of our stuff yeah, well, they're the they're definitely yeah. I mean, AWS is great too, but the complexity uh, aspect sure. kind of makes it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now, it's just over a billion coins. Um, there's no cap on supply, but it, it uh, goes down uh, by half every two years or so, uh, as far as like how many rewards are generated per minute. Um, but that could be changed by governance at any time. So your cabining is half of the Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we're have we're having having. <laughs> Yeah, we just got added to, I think it's like 50,000 ATMs in Costa Rica. I don't know if it's been fully implemented yet. Um, our CEO is working directly with them. CEO is from Costa Rica um, and has a couple other businesses down there, so he's really well connected. Uh, so we're doing actually a couple things in Costa Rica right now. Um, we have initiatives in Africa, Venezuela. Um, these markets are going to be adopted first as far as crypto. I actually just gave a presentation in South Africa and I was shocked to learn how active their local Bitcoin market is. Um, I thought, you know, yeah, one day or they'd be the first to adopt. Like, no, they are literally using it on a daily basis today, right now. And um, so, of course, uh, we want to be where that action is. And um, that's looking good there. So, if you get a Google trend, you can see. You can, yeah. Right. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But it, it makes a lot of sense, right? You know? Exactly. Hundred percent. I agree. Sorry, you, and then we can go to you. Yeah. Uh, so, like, a blockchain built around higher staking rewards sounds great if the rewards that you're getting have a value. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, what's driving the actual value? Like, why would I want to stake this? Like, what convinced me that the token is going to actually yeah, have its value and not lose its value? Yeah. So today. Um, it's pretty much just a staking and masternode coin. Um, but if you take a look at our roadmap, you'll see that we're building an ecosystem that makes cryptocurrency easier to use, and not just Divi, but all cryptocurrencies. Um, so our metadata technology will enable um, readable, human readable addresses, um, um, storage on the blockchain, different, different uh, pretty much any arbitrary data within the blockchain. Um, and you'll have to use Divi in order to access those features. Um, we've had people come to us with various ideas for how to use the Divi coin within their own ecosystems, wanting to white label our wallet. Um, we just partnered with a company that uh, is doing instant payroll adjudication um, that will end up using Divi, the Divi coin, uh, to, to manage that and maintain and, um, and actually adjudicate a lot of those transactions. Um, our masternode network will eventually be used to, uh, as funding channels for the Lightning Network. Um, which, assuming cryptocurrency is actually used as currency, which we're seeing in, in places like Africa, Venezuela, uh, that will become extremely important. Um, so you probably won't see much utility in the United States very soon for Divi, um, but you will see value for it elsewhere uh, much sooner. Does that make sense? There's a, there's a lot to this project. Um, we really want to build out an ecosystem, not just a single single serving idea. Um, so it's hard to get all the way into it in, in 20 minutes, but uh, I, I really encourage you to check out our website and I think you'll find uh, a lot more. The public's looking for use cases. Agreed. We're looking for you know, video games or? Yeah, we've, we've, had, we've had video game um, companies come to us. There's a, there's a decentralized exchange that's looking to use our blockchain again, um, the KYC, the portable KYC thing seems to be the most interesting to, uh, to the p potential partners that we talk to. I think that digital identity is at risk, uh, especially we've seen with Equifax and, and Facebook and things like that. And I think um, privatizing that and making sure that it's secure for the user um, and, and keeping sovereignty over your identity is going to become massively important. Uh, and we're, we're going to be at the forefront of that. I think Divi is really positioned to become a, a usable currency. Um, especially as we implement things like atomic swaps. If I'm a merchant and I only want to accept Bitcoin, but I only own Divi, atomic swaps can enable me to pay Divi and you 
to receive Bitcoin pretty much instantly. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things that can and will be done with with our coin in the near future. Like a top question for you. <laughs> Yeah. So when you first started your project, I'm assuming it had a roadmap for when you first were announcing it. If you were in our shoes, would we have invested? Would we have? How would we have taken your advice to invest in that project or not? Given at that time. Yeah, um, that's a great question. Well, we did raise two million dollars, so somebody thought it was a good idea. <laughs> um, there were probably dynamics to our to our ecosystem at that time that were not investable. Um, but I think what drove us forward was, was our team. Um, you know, we have people from Yahoo, we have people from Microsoft on our team. Uh, we have <laughs> entrepreneurs that have done extremely well in business, uh, both in tech and out. Um, and I think that's what people really believed in from the beginning, because we didn't have anything in the beginning. We just had a, a white paper and a, and a smart contract, you know. Um, and despite all of the challenges, we still were able to launch our, our blockchain, our desktop app. In September and I think that really gave people confidence surviving the bear market really gave people more confidence and as people are starting to see utility like down in Costa Rica uh, like with this payments platform etch um, they're like okay maybe maybe that maybe there is something here you know uh, so no in the beginning probably not but now much more much more so there's still fundamentals to, to the project that should should and could be improved but you know one day at a time Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, DiviProject.org here. Let's see if I can. There you go. Yep. White papers on the wiki. There's tons of information on the wiki. Probably take you a couple hours to read through the whole thing, and you can get pretty much inform any information you want. Come to our Telegram channel as well. It's just Divi Project. Um, tons of really helpful community members in there. Uh, people building things for the project that are not affiliated with us necessarily, but are building solutions using our ecosystem. Um, tons of people out there that that will give you confidence in the project. I think. Um, on the financials and uh, the return on investment, what type of investment are we? Are you are you suggesting what type of Oh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't give financial advice, of course, um, but uh, our rate of return is around 50%. That is not a return on investment. There's a distinct difference between rate of return. Rate of return is just coins coming back to you. Those coins could be worth anything at any time, but that's generally, and there's a rewards calculator that you can check out as well on our website. Of course, that's going to go down too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.